Today we're in the drawing room at Kenmore and Joe is going to show us how to play the colonial card game of Whist. So today we're going to be playing the game of Whist. It's played with a normal deck of cards, 52 cards, but it might look a little bit different than what you're used to playing with. It's the normal four suits. Diamonds, spades, hearts, and clubs. The other thing that should look familiar to you are the royal face cards. We have king, queen, and what you know as jack, but in the 18th century would have been known as a knave. It's the same exact thing, it's a lower card than the king and the queen, and can be differentiated between the king because, well, a king gets to sit, a knave is always standing. The term jack is used somewhat in the 18th century, but not popularized until the 19th century when they put letters up in the corners. The last element of an 18th century deck of cards is just the same as a modern deck of cards. They number from 10, the highest card, all the way down to 2, the lowest card. We might think that this is the lowest card at a 1, when in fact it's an ace. And just like in a modern deck, an ace is actually high. We might be a bit more accustomed to seeing an ace like this. As each hand begins, we must pick a trump suit. The entire deck of 52 cards is dealt out to all four players. The game of whist is played with blind pairs, which means that James and I will be on a team. I won't know what's in his hand, but we'll be trying to take more tricks than the other pair, that being Courtney and Abby. So they are playing to an end, and we are playing to an end, and that is to get more tricks or more points than the other team. It is customary for the person to the left of the dealer to place the first card on the table. Once the suit has been chosen, each individual player at the table must follow suit. Each one of the players is trying to have the highest card put down on the table for their team. Even though Abby laid a two, since her partner put down a king, they take this trick. Since Courtney just won that individual trick, it is her turn to place down the first card. Once again, we had to follow suit since a heart was placed first. However, since James laid the ace, the highest card, this time, we take the trick. Now James does not have any of the specific suit originally laid. He has two options. He can either play a card of a different suit that's not the trump suit, a low card to get rid of, or he might choose to play a trump suit. In doing so, he will take this trick. Right now, the ladies have six tricks. In the game of whist, you start taking points once you've collected at least six tricks. That's because there are 13 tricks to play, and after that, that means you have a majority. That means you won that specific hand. But the game of whist is not to only win one hand. The purpose of the game is to collect as many points as possible. In the 18th century, typically you'd play to an agreed number, maybe 5, 10, 15. 50 if you had the whole evening to play. The game of whist was incredibly popular throughout the 18th century, both in England and across the Atlantic here in the colonies. We know that George Washington played the game of whist, and Fielding Lewis himself had Hoyle's Treatise. It was an instructional guide to card games of the 18th century. It was enjoyed in taverns and drawing rooms with strangers and friends and family. It could be played on a cold, snowy, or rainy day, or late into the evening by a fire. It was a great way to spend time, have fun with friends in the 18th century or in the 21st. 